What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're finding this content useful, please go ahead and do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. All right, so moving right along, we're working in Studio One, version 4.1 Professional today, and I wanted to pick up from where we left off in the last two videos and go a little deeper into the note effects, and today we're going to be focusing on the quarter. Now, there's a ton of videos that have already been done on the quarter, so I'm not going to go into detail in terms of every single aspect of what it is and what it does. I'm sure most of you know already. Essentially, it allows you to trigger full chords with one key through a MIDI controller or a QWERTY keyboard if you're just using your built-in keyboard in Studio One on your laptop. Whatever the case is, really cool tool. Now, one issue that I run into with the quarter is that the presets that ship right out of the box are not really any chord progressions that I would use. Now, I think there's a, what is it? This Neo Soul chord group one, two, and three, they're kind of cool, but regardless of that, the way I see using the quarter is to come up with your own custom chords. But I found a really cool workaround that I didn't know that you could do until yesterday, and I wanted to share it with you guys. So a couple videos back, I made mention of the fact that I've created a bunch of music loops that are categorized in folders that I use for the songwriting process. And essentially what a music loop is, is that it allows you to preview the file, but if you were to right click any of these files over here and show package contents, you'll notice that we have all this information. We've got the FLAC file, which is used as a preview. We've got a part.mid and a part.music, so a standard MIDI file or an instrument part in Studio One terminology. And then we have the preset that was used to create the music loop. And it carries all of this information over in one encapsulated file. So it's a very handy format, and I've been using them as much as I can because I think they're really, really cool in terms of working with songwriting because they carry all this information. Now, having said that, I thought to myself, you know what, I'd really love to have these music loops that I created. I'd really love to have the same presets available in the quarter. And so I thought there's got to be an easier way to do this. And I found out something yesterday when I was messing around with this and I was trying to create some presets. So first off, let's go ahead and select our instrument track. And we've got an instance of the quarter here. This is a default setting. If we go into Let's activate the power. If we go into learn mode, I can clear all. So that clears all of these chords so that there's no information. And that gives us a new blank slate to start off with. That's the first thing that you're going to want to do. Now, I'm going to go over to a different bar over here. And we can addition any of these, but these all sound pretty cool. Let's have a listen to this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's use that. I'm just going to reveal all the contents here. We can use either one of these. One thing I'm going to do before I do that, though, is I'm going to use the rename file option just so that I can do a command C to copy that into my clipboard. That's going to come in handy in a moment. So, okay, let's go ahead and let's drag this in. Now I'm at a, kind of like a half time feel. So if we hold alter option, we can half the length of this MIDI file. And if we were to play this, it would sound just as we would expect. We'll go ahead and deactivate the quarter, make sure our click is on. Okay, perfect. So here's the deal. If I was to go ahead, let's bring our note effects back in, and I'm gonna go ahead and just open this up in my music editor. In fact, we'll zoom that in a little bit so we have a little bit more resolution. If I now open up the quarter, and keep in mind that we cleared this preset, let's go into our learn mode. We're gonna select this key, and one thing that I noticed is that if you select each one of these pieces of note data here, it will automatically add them into the quarter. What this means, Don't worry about this lower note not playing. That has something to do with the ranges here, but when it comes to the chord, it'll work just fine. All I'm doing is selecting these. So now that I have these chords, let's come out of our learn mode. Now if I was to go ahead and bring up my QWERTY keyboard, because I don't have any controller hooked up to my system currently, and I was to go ahead, I can choose my octaves by using the left and right arrow key. So now if I scroll through, we'll make sure that we record enable this track. I'm playing one key. And you can even jump octaves. 
right? Just by using whatever controller you're having. So that to me is really cool because I think a lot of people probably have some MIDI files with some cool chord progressions. And I know there's some other third-party applications that generate MIDI files that can be dragged and dropped into the Studio One timeline. And if these are the types of files that you're using on a regular basis, I just found out that it's really easy to create a preset from an instrument part simply by dragging it in. Now, one thing I did run into some difficulties with is if you take addition notes off, it doesn't work quite as you would expect. So let's go ahead. I'll just show you that really, really quickly. So we've got this one. So let's use the next key. We'll go back into learn mode. We'll come over here. If I deselect addition notes, these are not coming in. But then if I reselect addition notes, I can add them. So that's one caveat is that you have to make sure addition notes is active. But when it is, you can very easily double click your instrument part to open it up in the music editor and then enter learn mode, choose the key and then click each one of these one at a time and they will automatically come in. I'm just going to remove this because we don't need that anymore. And last but not least, the last step would be coming out of learn mode. And once you have this preset and you're happy with it, you can just go ahead and save this as a preset. Now, my goal here is that I want to recreate the exact naming structure and folder structure of all of these progressions that I've already created with a friend of mine. So what I'm going to do, I keep in mind, I already copied this into my clipboard. I can go in here and I can store a preset. Now I want to make sure that I put it in the minor progressions folder. Now I've already created that folder, but if we wanted to go there, we still have to type this out manually as of the time that I'm doing this video. Maybe that's something that they'll change in a future update. Now I'm going to go ahead and just paste the name in, and then this will automatically save it in the proper setup. And now if I go into my minor progressions, you'll see that I have three progressions that I've ported over two, nine, and 10. So if I was to, for example, you know, we can start on this one over here. And if I wanted to move to the next preset, and another one, So just a really, really cool way to be able to create quarter presets from instrument parts or MIDI regions that you have access to. Now, if I can give you one tip, I would say if you wanted to go ahead and start programming some of these, if just keep things simple for yourself. If you did them all, for example, in the key of C, another thing to keep in mind with the way that the quarter works is that we have this built-in transpose function here. So if I was to, for example, say, if I wanted to move this up, I could do that very, very quickly, or I could move it down if I wanted to. Maybe we'll go up an octave. And then of course, the last step is after you record that information, you would always want to go ahead and render that into your instrument parts. And that's something that we've already covered in other videos, but essentially it's just a simple matter of going to instrument parts and then making sure that you render your instrument tracks. So just an extremely useful tool. And if you already have some MIDI events or MIDI regions or instrument parts that have been created, that could come from music loops, third party applications. If you want to create quarter presets from them, it's just a simple matter of following the steps that I've outlined in this video. Anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. I hope you guys got something from this. Again, if you're enjoying this content, please go ahead, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll do my best to get back to you and we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.